A long losing streak continues, plus there's a big upset on Monday night. Week 8 is in the books and you know what that means. It's time for another trip around the league in the Week 8 Recap Show. Let's get it started. We're going to start in Arizona with the Thursday night game between our Packers and the Cardinals as two top teams in the NFC do battle. Our Packers are up 30-7 with time running out in the third quarter. Arizona strikes back and makes the game a little interesting again with this 64-yard touchdown to Rondale Moore and it cuts the lead to 30-13. On the next Packer drive, the Cardinal defense makes a huge play as Malcolm Butler intercepts the pass intended for Marquez Valdez-Scantling and runs it the other way, 76 yards to the house. It's now 30 to 20. From there though, our Packers are able to hold on and avoid the second half collapse, winning 30 to 20 over the Cardinals. On to the first Sunday game and we're taking a look at two young quarterbacks as Joe Burrow's Bengals face Zach Wilson's Jets. Fourth quarter, 141 left and it's fourth and four from the Bengals six. Jets down by six. Zach Wilson fires to the back of the end zone Rookie running back Michael Carter is able to hold on through contact and the Jets have the lead 10-9. It's Wilson's only touchdown pass of the game. Joe Burrow shows off his elite arm strength as he gets the Bengals in the scoring position on the second play of the very next drive. On third and goal, Joe Mixon caps off his dominant day on the ground, powering into the end zone for a rushing touchdown that gives his team the lead right back 15-10. The two-point conversion pass to Tyler Boyd seals the deal as the Bengals pull off the comeback win 17-10 and leaves MetLife Stadium crowd stunned. Next, it's on over to Indy where the Titans are hoping to stay undefeated in division play. They're also hoping to keep the Colts winless in the AFC South as well. The Titan offense runs and throws all over the Colts and takes all the win out of their sails in the very first half. Ryan Tannehill throws three touchdowns. Two to Julio Jones and one to Anthony Frisker. Add in Derrick Henry's monster day of 171 yards on 34 carries, you have all the proof you need for the Big Titans 27-3 win over the Colts. Let's head on down to Texas, Houston to be exact, as the Rams face the Texans. Houston has to be excited coming off of their win against Arizona last week and they want to keep their momentum going. This game was competitive all the way through and on third and goal from the Texans 5, with the game tied at 21, Matthew Stafford has to throw the ball away as the Texans defense stands tall. This forces the Rams field goal to make it 24-21. The Texans next drive ends in disaster as Tyrod Taylor is sacked, loses the ball and Aaron Donald recovers it then returns it for a touchdown. The Rams open the lead up to 10, 31-21. And despite a last ditch touchdown pass from Tyrod Taylor to Anthony Miller, it's not enough. Rams win a close one, 31-28. AFC North play continues in this week 8 matchup between Pittsburgh and Cleveland as the Steelers look to hold on to second place, as well as their undefeated start in division play. The Browns on the other hand, don't want to go 0-2 in the division, especially not one where the Ravens and Steelers are near the top so far this season. This game was extremely competitive from the very first quarter with neither team really having a clear edge. In the third with the Browns down a score on second and goal, Nick Chubb gets the carry here and pretty much waltzes into the end zone with a dive at the end, tie it up at 17. Pittsburgh responds on their next drive as on first down from the Browns 35, Big Ben throws a jump ball up in the end zone and Chase Claypool comes down with it to give the Steelers a lead going into the fourth. Now in the fourth, Steelers lead by 4 with 5.47 to go. Andrew Billings pushes the pocket back into Roethlisberger who fumbles and is recovered by Miles Garrett. Now the Browns have a chance to take the lead. It only takes one play as Mayfield hits Nick Chubb out of the backfield and he falls forward into the end zone. The Browns now have the lead in this one 27-24. All they have to do is hold Pittsburgh for about 5.5 minutes. Easy right? Right? It's the Browns, so two good things can't happen in a row. On this third down with 355 left in the game, Baker Mayfield takes a sack from Quincy Roche, and the fumble is recovered by Chris Wormley. They now have a chance to take the lead right back. And take the lead they would, as on third and inches, it's the rookie running back from Alabama, Najee Harris, 
gashing the Cleveland defense for the go-ahead touchdown, making it 31-27, and the Steelers would hold on to come out on top in this phenomenal showdown in the AFC North. From the AFC to the NFC we go now as the Eagles and Lions square off. Both teams are 1-6 this season, I hope that a win here could be the start of a run for them. Lions lead 7-3 late in the first quarter. Jamal Williams gets into the end zone on this goal line run here, put them up 14-3, ending the quarter. Lions would lead 21-9 at one point, but in the fourth quarter with 5.54 left and the score of 21-12 Lions, it's the Jalen to Jalen connection as Hurts hits Ragor on the scramble for a touchdown that cuts the Lion lead to 21-19. The Lions are able to make it a 8 point game again, 27-19, and with 52 seconds to go, Hertz winds up and lets it fly downfield. John Hightower comes down with it awkwardly and holds on to complete the touchdown catch. It's 27-25, but the Eagles now need the 2 point conversion. A false start penalty makes the attempt a little harder. Miles Sanders gets the handoff and goes up the middle. But football truly is a game of inches as he's denied just before the plane of the end zone. So the Lions defense holds and they win a thriller 27-25 to stun the Eagles at home. On to Soldier Field where the 49ers are still looking for their first win of the season as they're 0-6. But they have to go through the Bears to do so. Chicago jumps out to a early 17-0 lead in the first quarter. And one of the big reasons for that was their defense. Roquan Smith picks off Trey Lance here and takes it the other way 59 yards for a touchdown. That was one of two Trey Lance interceptions that were returned for touchdowns. The other came from the former Miami Hurricane Artie Burns in the fourth. Chicago's defense makes life difficult for the 49ers as they're still without a win this season, dropping this game 30-24. Let's stay in the NFC and take a trip over to Atlanta for the game between the Panthers and Falcons. Atlanta's happy to be home after losing big in Miami last week, and they're hoping to get back above 500. There wasn't a whole lot of offense, but that doesn't mean the game wasn't exciting. Atlanta takes a 12-10 lead to begin the fourth quarter by way of a field goal. Then with 1.53 left, Matt Ryan hits Alamade Zacchaeus, who then breaks a tackle and is off to the races 59 yards for the final score of the game that gives Atlanta the 19-10 win. Back on over to the AFC now, this time we've got two teams with two streaks on the line as the Dolphins are on the road to play the Bills in an AFC East division game. The Dolphins are winners of four in a row, all the Bills are coming off a bye, but winners of their last three. The Dolphin offense continues to impress as it's Tua Tungabailoa who throws two touchdowns. One to Will Fuller who had a huge day catching seven passes for 128 yards and the other to Devontae Parker who caught this one for 55 yards. Miami continues to move their win streak higher as it goes to five games with this 33-16 win over the Bills. Staying in the AFC, it's time to go to SoFi Stadium as the Patriots face the Chargers. Since taking over in week 5, Mac Jones has won two games against the Texans and Jets. He's hoping to get his third here against the Chargers. The Patriots really dominated this game, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Justin Herbert had a rough day being sacked nine times, and the Patriot defense forced three fumbles. Mac Jones threw a touchdown pass to John U. Smith, and Damian Harris ran for a score as well in the 31-3 beatdown of the Chargers. It's time to take a visit to Seattle and the 12th man fan base is rocking as their Seahawks have gone on a tear. Winners of their last five in a row, hottest team in the NFL right now, and they're hoping to extend that to six. Here with the win over the Jaguars, who are sliding as of late, losers of their last three. But coming off a bye last week, they want to right the ship. It was a Tyler Lockett show for Seattle as he and Russell Wilson gave the Jaguar defense headaches all game. Wilson throws for 265 yards and two touchdowns, both to Tyler Lockett, who caught four balls for 110 yards to lead the Seahawks to their sixth win in a row 
24-3. In Denver, it's Washington facing the Broncos, and you've got to think they're foaming at the mouth coming into this game against a struggling Broncos team after being handed their first loss of the season last week by our Packers. Washington picks up right where they left off as both sides of the ball dominate. Ryan Fitzpatrick throws two touchdowns, both to Terry McLaurin on 259 yards passing. McLaurin finishes with 146 yards receiving and Antonio Gibson has himself a big game running for 171 yards and a score. Their defense held the Bronco offense to a total of 133 yards. Washington shuts out Denver 24-0. Down to the bayou we go as James Winston looks to eat a W against his former team as the Buccaneers come into town to face the Saints in the final 4pm game on Sunday. Bucks lead 17-3 into the 4th with 7.23 left in the game. Alvin Kamara gets into the end zone on the goal line and the game is knotted up at 17 as the comeback is complete. Bucks would answer with the field goal making it 20-17 and on 4th and 11 with 102 left. Jameis attempts to give his team the lead, launching this ball towards the end zone. However, great coverage by Jamel Dean pops the ball up in the air and Michael Thomas can't locate it to force a turnover on downs. Winston outperforms Tampa Tom, throwing for 348 yards. They match each other in touchdowns, but in the end, the Bucks get the win 20-17. Time for the Sunday night game now as we go over to Minnesota where the top tier defenses meet as the Cowboys go up against the Vikings. Well one defense certainly showed up and it was Dallas's. They got the Kirk Cousins a ton, sacking him 7 times and forcing 5 fumbles, 2 of which were actually resulted in turnovers for the Cowboys defense. On the other side, it's the stars of the offense showing off for the Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott runs for a score while Dak Prescott throws three touchdowns each to a different receiver. One to Amari Cooper, one to Dalton Schultz, and one to Michael Gallup. The Cowboys don't even allow the Vikings to make it a game, winning big 31-3. Finally, in the Monday night contest, it's the Giants going on the road into the hostile environment of Arrowhead Stadium to face the Kansas City Chiefs. The Giants were up to task early in the game as at halftime they were pitching a shutout leading 13-0. In the third quarter however, Kansas City would cut the lead to 3 as Mahomes connects with Travis Kelsey with 3.26 to go, it's a close game again. Moving ahead to the fourth and the Giants now lead 16-10. Patrick Mahomes steps up in the pocket and throws a costly interception on second down to Lorenzo Carter. Jones and the offense march down the field and cap off the Giants with the Saquon Barkley rushing touchdown. The Giants from there would ride the wave to victory, pulling off the upset, beating the Chiefs at home 29 to 10. Now it's time for a look at standings. Let's start first in the AFC North. The Ravens are in first place at six and one. Steelers are behind with five and two. Browns and Bengals are tied four and four. In the AFC South, the Titans still in first place at 5-3. Jaguars are falling, losing four in a row now to go to 3-4. Texans are in third place at 3-5, while the Colts are in last, 2-6. In the AFC East, the Dolphins are 7-1, winners of five in a row. Patriots are 4-4, four four, winning to the last two. Bills in third, 3-4. Jets are in last place at 1-6 also loses the last four in a row. In the AFC West, the Raiders are in first place, winning five in a row to get up to five and two. All the Chiefs are in second at five and three. Chargers in third at one and six. Broncos in last place at one and seven. Over to the NFC now, starting with the North. Our Packers are in first place at seven and one, running away with the division right now. Bears are in second at four and four. All the Vikings are in third at 2-5 and, and the Lions in last place, 2-6. and six. In the NFC South, the Buccaneers atop, running away with that division as well. 7-1 winners of three in a row. Falcons are in second at 4-3. Panthers, 4-4. Four four. Saints, 3-4 in last place. In the NFC East, the Cowboys winning six in a row to get up to 6-1. Washington is 6-2. 
Giants in third at three and five, and the Eagles are in last place, losing the last six in a row, one and seven. And finally in the NFC West, the Seahawks are one of the hottest teams in the NFL again, winners of six in a row along with the Cowboys, and they are six and two on the season. Cardinals are 5-3 and three in second place, Rams are in third at 3-5, and five. winners of two in a row, and we know, we know, the 49ers are still winless at 0-7. Now it's time to take a look and see who won the Player of the Week awards in Week 8, starting as always with the AFC side. Ryan Tannehill brings home the offensive side of the award this week with his 161 passing yards and 3 touchdowns. Meanwhile, on the defensive side of the AFC, it's the Patriots linebacker, Dante Hightower. He had 8 tackles, 1 sack, a forced fumble, home recovery was also returned for a touchdown in that game. And on the NFC side, it's Jack Prescott of the Cowboys bringing home the offensive award this week for them. 3 touchdowns and 254 yards in their game will get that done. On the defensive side, it's Roquan Smith, linebacker for the Bears. All over the field, 10 tackles. One interception that was also returned for a touchdown. Congratulations to all the players who won the award in Week 8. Now let's see what Week 9 has in store for our Packers, as they'll continue their road trip this time. It's a potential Super Bowl preview as they face the Kansas City Chiefs. Both of these teams are top 10 in points scored and pass yards per game. As always, the top player to look out for on the Chiefs is Patrick Mahomes. So if our Packers want any chance of winning this game, I have to find a way to slow him down. And all I gotta say to Coach AJ Mirabli is, good luck. Leave your score predictions in the comments down below. Let's hit the go home now, shall we? It's time to look at our other stories heading into week 9. The Cowboys and Seahawks have the longest active win streak at 6 in a row. Can Dallas keep Bears alive against the Broncos this week? Miami is also hot winning 5 in a row and now sitting at 7 and 1. Tied with the Bucks and Packers for the best record in the NFL. Are they on upset alert this week against the Texans? Remember, the Texans already pulled off an upset this week back in Week 7, beating the Cardinals 49-24. Let's keep that fact in the back of our pocket, shall we? And finally, the first win to watch for the 49ers continues, as they are the only team winless at 0-7. The bad news is, they're hosting a Cardinals team that has now lost two in a row. So they are hoping to get back on track in a bounce back game here. Thanks for watching the Week 8 Recap Show in the Packers franchise. If you like this video, check out some others here on the channel. And if you're new, consider subscribing. Keep on shining and keep on grinding, B-Team. I will see you all in the next one.